Welcome back to E39 Source. Ryan Schultz here with actually not my 2000 M5. It's in the shop getting some work done and the 3 Series takes the garage for the time being. So I got back from a trip to California back in September. I came home, it was beautiful outside. I was excited to drive the car. I fired it up, drove it for a while, everything was fantastic. Came back in the garage, parked it, went inside, did some work. Came back out and uh, backed it out of the garage and I noted that uh, there was a, a wet spot under the car, which is weird. It wasn't raining, I wasn't using the air conditioning, it does not leak any oil or any other fluids. And right back here, kind of back where my foot is, there was a puddle, which I quickly determined to be gasoline. That's not the kind of leak that you want in a car. You don't want any leak, but gasoline's maybe the worst kind of leak you can have because it's extremely flammable and very near the hot exhaust. So I crawled under there and I took a look and I determined that uh, there was a junction of two fuel lines that met coming right down. You could just see it by the fuel tank, by that left rear wheel, and it was dripping from there for about 10 seconds after I would turn off the car. So there's high pressure in the line. You turn it off, the, plush, the pressure would bleed out and uh, drip maybe 50 drops in a round three inch uh, puddle. So I went to real OEM, as I always do, and uh, found out that the leak was coming from right where part number one <clears throat> meets up with, I believe, part number four. It doesn't look like a clean junction there, but in application it is. So that means part number one, the fuel feed line from the fuel pump on over across the car to the driver's side where it then meets part number four and runs up to the fuel filter, that junction was leaking. Part number four is original on my car and it looks perfect. It looks new, it's shiny, it's metal, there's no corrosion on it whatsoever. The fitting on the end of part number one was totally rusted out. So part number one needed to be replaced. I dug into my spreadsheet and determined that the fuel pump had not been replaced since around 30,000 miles in 2003. For whatever reason, it was done under warranty. So that fuel pump is extremely old. Now I talked to the shop that's been doing this work. I don't have, I have the tools to do it, but I don't have a lift. I don't have a way of getting under the car and doing this kind of work. I can do a lot with these cars, but I'm limited when it comes to the idea of a lift. So I found out from my local shop, the guys that built the motor, that in order to replace part number one, the fuel tank has to come out. Removing the fuel tank wouldn't be too terrible if you didn't have to remove the exhaust and the drive shaft as well. So this has started the entire project. I took it in last Thursday, today is Tuesday the 24th, and it's still not back and we're still a couple days away waiting on parts and services to be completed. Um, so everything's down and apart right now. They got the tank out, no problem. I had replaced the fuel tank straps in a DIY a couple of years ago. That was pretty easy, mine were all rusted. Now they're nice and clean and the hardware's new, so they came out, no problem. Uh, so we replaced part number one, part number four and five are fantastic. Um, get a fuel pump over here. We're gonna put the fuel pump in it and there's part number seven on a different diagram on this one. This is the one that shows the fuel pump, that being part one, and then part number seven, the fuel tank's in two pieces, it's separate. So part number seven is kind of a Venturi suction pipe that takes uh, fuel from side one and puts it over to side two where the pump is. Uh, there's only the one fuel pump, so you've got to keep the levels even between the two, not only for weight distribution, but to keep the, the pump fed. So we're gonna be doing that as well. All that can be done with the tank in the car and you just pull the back seat up and the little access holes and you can get to it right there. But there's more problems. Part number seven, that's a vent hose, it's not under any pressure, and for whatever reason, it was not made out of the same materials as four and five. As I said, those looked perfect, even after 197,000 miles in 17 years. Part number seven was a Titanic artifact, like half the other stuff was under there three years ago. So we gotta replace that as well. Uh, the rear vent hose, that's been completed. Then I look at part number eight, that's totally screwed and corroded too, so we've got that on the way. Everything with the red circle about, around it is being replaced. A lot of those items being small hardware bits. 14, 15, 11, 12, and 13 are all just small pieces of hardware. They're back ordered from Germany, but those can go in um, after the fact. I'm looking to get the car on the road. I've replaced the fuel filter, I've replaced the pressure regulator, the fuel filter and regulator housing. Um, so essentially we're going to have a completely new fuel system minus parts four and five by the time this is done. Another problem we ran into. So they pull the exhaust off, they pull the drive shaft off the car. And um, when I had the drive shaft down a year and a half ago, I had them inspect the U-joint and determine 
should I replace this drive shaft or is it good? And the U-joint was tight, there was no reason to replace it, so we didn't. We put it back in the car. 6,000 miles later, fast forward to present day, they take the drive shaft out and note that there is now slop in the U-joint. The U-joint being the universal joint that allows the drive shaft to bend a little bit like that. So that means I've got to replace the drive shaft. That throws another wrench in this whole thing. Problem is, I've had a drive shaft for two years in the basement, sitting down there, perfectly good, CSB and um, center support bearing and the CV joint on it already. And uh, I sold it about 10 days ago to a guy in Florida. I didn't think I needed it. 10 days later, I find out that I do need it. What are the odds of that? How does that happen? I don't know, it did. So I went to Adam back in Dayton, Maryland. He sent me another one. That arrived today. It's from an O2 with 84,000 miles. New drive shafts are over $1,000 and that's ridiculous. I got that one for 240 with express shipping. So we'll be replacing the drive shaft too. It's amazing that just a little fuel leak, a little couple drops of fuel can turn into thousands of dollars in parts and labor. It's insane but we're gonna have a nice fuel system by the time this is done. So anyways, now to talk about this, we got a couple parts here today. Um, the fuel pump and the Venturi hose and the main vent line that was the problem, part number one, they're already at the shop. Those have already been received, it looks great. Ran into a couple other snags though. When the drive shaft was out, I noted that the heat shielding that goes up in the transmission tunnel around the drive shaft, the holes, it's aluminum, so it doesn't rust, but for some reason, these holes here had completely rotted out, and there's no fastening equipment short of using a washer the size of a donut that was gonna hold these things on the car. So I was able to source these. These are the two new um, bits of heat shielding that go there. The part number's there, but you guys, nobody else is gonna need this stuff. Um, I wanna do my usual huge thanks to FCP Euro for making this possible, and this is a great kind of job to use someone like FCP Euro for. You've heard me talk about it before, but they're the only sales company I found that does a lifetime warranty. So these parts are consumable. You can go a long time in between replacing them. Nonetheless, they are still consumable parts. They rust, they wear, they crack, they break, they fail eventually. So getting these parts through FCP Euro, inclusive of the fuel pump and the fuel filter and any of these parts, anything they sell, oil, wiper blades, whatever, you get those parts, you put them in your car, you use them, and down the road, 5,000 miles or 500,000 miles, should they fail again, you send them back to FCP, you buy a new one, and then you are fully refunded for the price. That is their lifetime warranty on these parts. And it's really, really, really awesome that something like that exists. So be sure to check out FCP Euro. They have a vast, vast selection of OE and OEM parts for BMW, Mini Cooper, and various other manufacturers. So anyways, we've got some more parts here. These are just some um, little grommets that go up and hold the fuel lines up into their hardware on the underside of the car, connect the lines to the chassis as they run up the car. This one's a little different. It's got the peg in the middle, um, clamps, this stuff, and then whatever else is in the shop. So I'm about to take these in there, drop them off, and um, hopefully we'll be able to film some progress and I'll show you a little bit more uh, about what's going on shortly. Fast forward to the next day and we've got part number eight on the diagrams that we've been looking at. This is the front vent hose. It says charcoal activated vent hose or something like that. And that's going from the fuel filter area up through the front left wheel well and then I believe into the engine bay. So I'm gonna go take that and drop it off at the shop. Today's Wednesday the 25th and we're not far from getting my car back but I went in today and picked up all the, or the old parts that have come off so far. There's a couple that aren't here. Uh, but we're gonna go through some of these and just explain what they are and as much as I can about how they work. So the first one we're gonna look at is the, um, I used to call it a fuel transfer pump, but it's really not a pump. It's part number seven on this diagram. This is what's responsible for taking fuel from side one to side two. And this one is not completely original. Uh, this one was put in in like 2006 or 2008. And this stuff, um, the stuff that's been in the fuel tank actually looks quite good. Um, this part probably could have survived a little longer. It looks good, but I can tell it's not as flexible and the plastic pieces are dirty, that O-ring shot, stuff like that. But that's what that thing looks like. That lives inside the fuel tank. Then we'll move on to, well, those stupid heat shields. The holes on mine are completely washed out and um, would not connect, so I have old ones that are probably worth nothing, seeing that 
they can't really be connected. Then we're gonna move on to this line right here. This is the whole reason I'm doing this project. This is the feed line. And look at the condition of where it was leaking. That's exposed to the elements. For some reason they decided not to galvanize that. The other end of that's just snapped completely off. It's crumbling. It's this blue flexible plastic. This end that goes on the fuel pump, worn, but not terrible. That end is just totally trashed. And what we were just looking at is part number one on that diagram. That's the main feed line from the pump over to the junction where it then goes up the side of the car. This is the old fuel pump itself after 160 some thousand miles and you'll note that the condition really visually looks quite good. It's been in the fuel tank. There's no water in there aside from what little bit might be in gasoline. Um, it's not exposed to any other elements. It's pretty clean. This is definitely a lot more brittle than the one that I put in. Um, this pump does still function but is quite old. So that's what the pump looks like. It's actually a lot smaller than what I expected. And if you're wondering about brand, it says right on there, Pierberg. So if you're online somewhere like FCP and looking for a new one and they carry the Pierberg, it's gonna be the same part. These are the old gaskets that go around each hole under the back seat. Um, the fuel pump comes with one, but then if, unless you're replacing the level sender or the float on the other side, you're gonna to have to order a separate one um, to get both of those replaced. And those gaskets are part number three on that graph. Next up is another vent hose, and we can see that this one is pretty well roasted on the sides too. Um, I don't know why those, those metal pieces aren't something better than that because they just totally disintegrate. That would have been my next leaking area too, so I'm really glad that uh, we're replacing that hose or have we have replaced that hose. And that would be part two right there on this graph. Let's take a second and appreciate that. Look at this fuel line. It's kinked over there. They folded it in half to fit in the box. That is one of the vent lines. This is not a line that's under pressure. It's right next to the other lines that are under pressure. So that hose that we just looked at is number seven. And if you look at four and five, they're all right there. They were all the same age. You just saw what number seven looks like. Parts four and five look new. They're perfect. So they used some sort of different material and or treatment on four and five, but neglected to do that on number seven. So that's what happens to the vent line for number seven. It just totally looks like crap. So we've replaced that. Then the rest of this stuff in the box is actually my original drive shaft. You can see it's pretty well cheetah printed there from Ohio Rust. The U-joint's starting to develop some play. This one's been taken apart into its two components and could be put back together. If anybody watching this wants a core unit, uh, a lot of times if you buy a new one and you have a core and you send it, they'll send you back a refund or something like that. If anybody has any use for it, let me know. To me, this is scrap metal and I would let it go at a reasonable rate. And then the last part here that I have are, uh, are these things. And there's like four or five of them under the car. The fuel lines sit in there. This goes into the chassis. And then there's a cap that goes over that and screws into it to keep the fuel lines flush up against the chassis and they don't hang, so they don't hang down. I believe that's part number 11 right there. Here's the new fuel transfer pipe, the new fuel line, feed line part number one, and the pump. I also replaced those rings that hold everything back together. The old ones look like hell. We'll see in a minute. There's a quick look at the new fuel pump as well. Then when the car's in the shop, we see the fuel tank down. I'll zoom in on the hardware and we can see what those old uh, locking rings look like. They're titanic artifacts, so those were exceedingly inexpensive, so we're replacing those as well. Here's the exhaust system down. It has to come back, has to come off from the headers back. The old drive shaft, we saw it in the garage, but there's the condition of things there. Um, all of that heat shielding was perfectly reusable, so that went back up into place. Then we'll get kind of a look under the car here. Uh, I had never seen it with the fuel tank down. I don't actually know if the fuel tank had ever been down. That blue line right there is part number two, that vent line that we replaced. And then there's parts four, five, and whatever the, uh, the, the main vent line is going up to the filter area. Uh, you saw how good the, the other ones looked, but the vent line was trashed. And then that rusty one right there is part number eight. Uh, the front vent line, which we have also replaced. In the transmission tunnel walking backwards, there's the differential and there's the holes that uh, actually look up into the interior. 
which is where you would normally replace just the fuel pump if you were doing just that job. It is now November and believe it or not, it's not even done yet. It's perfectly drivable. We're not leaking any fuel, but there are a couple bits of hardware that I still have to uh, put back on. I've had the car back for about a week. I've driven it, I've stress tested it, I've put a couple of miles on it, and so far so good. With all of those parts replaced, that seems to have done the trick. I'm going to have to get a flashlight to show you the actual junction over there, the part that's new. Uh, but before I do that, I just received these parts. These things had to come from Germany, so they came later. I don't remember the numbers. It was something like 11, 12, or 13 on one of the diagrams. Uh, these hold the fuel lines up against the chassis, and then those caps screw through the grommets up into the chassis. So I just received all of these things. It's kind of jury rigged in there right now, just so it's safe. Uh, but when I get back from my upcoming Mexico trip, then uh, I will crawl under there and install that. Okay, I'm trying to get the best view we can here under the car. Right there in the light, these are where all the lines are coming straight down from the fuel tank. We see the two silver ones, those are parts four and five on the diagrams that we've been looking at. And then the black one is the vent line, I think it was number seven. Four and five, those are still original. Look how perfect they look. A little bit of dust on them, but that's it. Seven, the black one has been replaced, and it was leaking right from one of the metal ones where it makes a junction and then goes up to the actual fuel pump. So, uh, so far so good, everything's done. This system should now last a very, very long time. And then in the, uh, in the video, I, I wasn't totally clear, the part that's way up there, part number eight, uh, has since been replaced since I filmed that. There's no way I was gonna leave that. So we went ahead and got that vent line. That was just a matter of removing this wheel, this inner fender liner, and then that vent line, it's it, the one that was, was very strangely shaped. Um, it only goes one way and it just snaps up into a bunch of clips in there along the chassis. And I think it does poke possibly up into the engine bay area. So, done. What an ordeal. Um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. If you guys have questions, uh, really just take a look at the real OEM explosion. Those things are truly invaluable when it comes to understanding how things work. So if you're having a fuel leak, it's gotta be at one of the junctions. If your fuel system isn't working, take a look at your filter, take a look at your pump, or take a look at your relay. That's actually a common uh, place of failure is the fuel pump relay, and I'll show you right where that is. You open your trunk, you open the right rear oddities tray, and then as you look in here, you see the huge black one right there to the left of the two green ones that is the fuel pump relay and you can swap it with a known good one or just replace it google it for the part number uh, they're kind of expensive but if that goes bad your fuel pump might be fine but it won't fire so keep that in mind as well. Again, huge thanks to FCP Euro for making this possible. I will link their website down below and I look forward to talking to you guys in a future E39 source video. Thanks for watching. Take care.